Hello everybody, it's Raiden here, and today we're playing Half-Life 2 once again. Last time we made our way through Ravenholm, but we're not entirely out of there yet. We still got this part to deal with. And, uh... Open this door, and, uh, mine shaft. Quick save before you enter this. Because this is probably the first platforming puzzle in the game that actually makes me... Once again, Valve says, screw you if you have acrophobia, which is fear of heights, which I definitely do. Okay. Okay, this is, is kind of difficult. You kind of got to maneuver yourself to ow. Down without dying. And th there's a method to it. But my personal method is just get down as quickly as you can. Which does not... Which means I can't get down there. Huh. It's not from there. And, uh, by the way, this room sucks. I hate this room. It's full of infinitely spawning head crabs, including poison ones. And exploding barrels. Don't even bother with killing most of the head crabs, though, because they're, they're, again, they spawn in infinite. There's no actual point to trying to kill any of these damn things, because you're just going to end up wasting time. And probably ammo as well. If you Plus, because of the abundance of poison head crabs down there, uh, one of them's probably going to hit you, and then another head crab's going to get a lucky shot and kill you. So yeah, my word of advice is get out of here as fast as you can. Which, um, what I was doing earlier when I was bumbling around looking like an idiot is I was trying to find the way out, which is down there. Or at least the way that you can take without taking too much fall damage. Because I really don't want to have to take fall damage in here as well. Convenient med kit that I happen to land right on. Okay, screw you. I'm not even going to bother with that poison head crab. There's some SMG ammo there, but really, you really shouldn't be out of SMG ammo. And we can get a lot more of it in, like, the next segment. Oh, shotgun shells. And I'm attached to a barnacle. Really, Valve? You had to put it there. I will take those shotgun shells, though. Now, this part's a little confusing if you don't realize where you're supposed to go, but you just gotta go over here. I got stuck here once again for a couple minutes, not realizing, hey, where the hell am I supposed to go? You know, I'm a dumb. Oh god, and here I completely mess up because I was recording. I messed this up so many times. But yeah, you see that thing? It spins, it kills things if it rams into them. So yeah, zombies here. Run back down here. It'll chop them up. It'll chop them up. Then you're supposed to go back up. Hide out in the little hidey hole here. Prevent that thing from chopping your head off. This cable gets in your way. You can't actually go past it, but... Uh, unless the thing's not in the way. And uh, here I fuck up because I forgot you're supposed to be crouching when you're that close to it. And I managed to screw this up several more times. This, uh, this segment's not really that easy. Oh, shit. Get in the hidey hole. And then I stupidly try to run all the way up here. I almost make it, as you can see, and then I die. I'm sure there's a way you can do that, but... Uh, this puzzle's, uh... Well, it's not hard, but it's just, you have to be precise with it, or else you end up getting killed. Just, uh, go up, hide out here. There are some other zombies in another hidey hole, but more than likely the thing's gonna ram into them before it can hit you. Up. That one. It, it, it didn't kill this one, though. Ah, oh, fine. I'll let that one live. 
Head into the light. Must move into the light. We're heading into the lights. We're finally out of the damn tunnels. Not exactly out of danger. Seagulls! Die! Ugh, I hate seagulls. Oh, crap. I hit this guy. Yo, that was a terrible failure. You can still see the zombies from the last chapter spooking around back there. A lot of magnum rounds, which I will take because I was really empty on those. Shotgun shells, I don't need those. What's up here? More magnum rounds and grenades. And apparently I never found that lambda spot, which I don't get because that one's kind of out in the open. Alright, getting the grenade out because we- oh shit, I forgot about these guys. Yeah, if you thought we were done with the fast zombies because we're out of Ravenholm, you are incorrect. Uh, okay. Moving in here. Oh, you see that laser sight? That, my friend, is a sniper. Yeah, new enemy, the sniper. You don't encounter these guys too often in the game. I think you only encounter them twice in this game. And this is one of those two seconds you run into them. But they're pretty easy to kill once you know how to do it. Oh. And, uh... Yeah, you can see new world model here. Uh, I'll talk about these guys a little more once we actually run into them. But that sniper's pretty easy to take out. This one up ahead is not. Uh, I'm just gonna blow that up. Because I think he blows that up if you get near it. Come on. Uh, while we're going here with the snipers, I guess I should mention something about the fast zombie. And that it was not in the original beta of Half-Life 2. Uh, there's something similar to it in the beta of Half-Life 2, but it was not, um, a fast zombie. It was something called a zombie assassin. Ow. Uh, which the zombie assassin is based on an enemy. I think it was based on something called the alien assassin, which was this weird-looking alien thing with weird spiky things on it, with weird spikes on its head. Well, that actually went better than it usually does. Uh, and this gives us a pretty damn good vantage point to hit him. Um, but it was this weird assassin that had spikes on its head, it could throw knives at you, it could throw grenades, it could shoot smoke bombs. But originally, the zombies were, the headcrafts were supposed to take that over, and you'd get something called the zombie assassin. Uh, which Valve eventually, I guess, when they cut the, the, the zombie, the assassin out, I guess they were they were forced to cut the zombie version of it out too, but I guess they liked it enough that they designed a new version based on it? I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, something about the snipers too is that although we never... Although we... They're obviously using a sniper rifle, we never actually get to see it. Like, it doesn't fall out when they die. You, like, lob a grenade into their little windows. They'll just, uh... The sniper rifle is still in there. In fact, you can never wield a sniper rifle in this game. You're going to be able to, originally. Uh, there's another weapon in this game that's basically the sniper rifle. But, oh, new enemy. The Combine... Oh, crap. That's a shotgun. But new enemy, the Combine Soldier. It's basically the main enemy of the game. Uh, the Combine Soldiers, they're, they're like the Metro Cops. But they're a little bit stronger. Uh, they use slightly different weapons. They use SMGs and uh, a new gun. The Pulse Rifle! I love this thing. Uh, so this is a fictional gun. One of the two fictional guns in this game. The other is the gravity gun. Uh, and it's, uh, pretty damn awesome. Now, the Pulse Rifle is basically just a better SMG. Seagull. Hold on, sorry. Gotta, gotta shoot this. Gotta fail at shooting any of those seagulls. Come on. Uh... Pulse Rifle is basically just a uh, the Combine's go-to Assault Rifle. It's pretty powerful. In fact, for whatever reason, it does twice as much damage when you're holding it than when an enemy's holding it. And I have no idea why that is. Now, the primary fire obviously just shoots off the The secondary fire, which we don't have access to yet, shoots a laser. Like, it shoots a little laser orb that disintegrates anything it hits. 
it's pretty useful, especially in uh, episode two, although they don't give it to you nearly as often. Now, there are two types of soldiers. There are these guys, which I've been slaughtering with no effort. Wait, actually, hold on. There's something in this... There's something in a crate. There's something in this... Okay, never mind. That's not what I was actually going for. But there is something. There's something in this car yard that I'm... I want. Oh, actually, I think I was checking for a lambda spot over here. Which... Because it kind of seems like this would be a spot where you'd hide one. Like, oh, you have to do something with the trains to get to it. But... Eh, uh, doesn't look like it. Now, there is a box inside that room we were just in that uh, has something you're going to want to get in it. It has a laser shot. Okay, yeah. But as I was saying, there are two types of Combine Soldiers. There are these ones with the, uh, the grayish armor. Winston's been hit. That, I think, is a reference to the book 1984, which this game takes a lot of inspiration Gordon from. I've never read it, but I've heard it's really good. It's incredible you made it. We've been getting communication from Alex. I'll see if I can reach her again. Follow me. Uh, yeah, but... Guys, why are you leaving these exploding barrels everywhere? That's just a safety hazard. One of these days, some dumbass is going to light a cigarette next to that, and it's going to blow the whole base up. Hold on a minute. I'm looking around. God. And there's nothing even up. There's nothing up here. Just some barrels. Over here, Dr. Freeman. Okay, shut up. But, uh... Crap, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, soldiers. It's there's uh, the ones with the light gray armor, which Gordon carry Freeman. pulse rifles and uh, SMGs. Freeman, you're kidding. Look, I've been but then there's also Alex. the shotgunners, which have red goggles. They have darker here, gray Dr. armor. Freeman. And they carry shotguns. And those guys are a pain in the ass because they do so much damage with every hit they deal to you. And they they aren't very they aren't very um cautious enemies. They just tend to rush straight in to try and kill you. Now the shotgun guys were originally only in episode two, but the 2010 update to the game made it uh, so that they are now in this game in episode one. While the trains are still running, I'm going to hitch a ride. Here's where you come in, Gordon. I need you to make your way along the coast until you get to Nova Prospect. It used to be a high-security prison. It's something much worse than that now. But I think it's still easier to sneak in than to break out. You wanted to take the coast road? You won't last five minutes on foot. It's spawning season for the ant lions. That's why I called you, Leon. I was hoping you still had the scout car we left with you last summer. The one my dad rigged with the tow can. Yeah, good idea. Hold on a sec. Narco, bring the buggy out. Put it on the dock right now. Gordon Freeman will be driving it. Will do. I just finished mounting an ammo crate on the back. Good timing. Okay, Alex, we're all set. <sighs> Thanks, Leon. Gordon, I haven't driven the coast in over a year, but I have no reason to think it's gotten any safer. Meet me in the depot where the trains unload. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in Nova Prospect. Bye for now. Bye, Alex. Okay, Doc. Before you hit the road, you might want to grab some med kits, uh, restock on ammo, maybe check the map, see where you're headed. There's an ammo supply crate on the well, back. I'm pretty of the much car. full on. Comfort. Well, I'm pretty Stay much full on everything. But... Oh, there's a map. The I'll radio ahead to let the next base know you're coming. Shorepoint to NLO. Just uh, stopping to look at the Vortigaunt. <laughs> I mean, you need a Vortigaunt in your life sometimes. <laughs> okay, but yeah, you didn't hear, but the scout. You heard the... Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's like they're not... Looks like they're not answering. Now, before we uh, get in the car, I want to show you what happens if you go in the water here. Basically, after this point, every area with the wa with water... Uh, hold on. We'll, uh... Now, by the way, there are things chasing me, but we... Uh... Now... If I am to turn around, you will see these little shits are attacking me. Those are leeches, and they are unkillable in this game. They're just to act as border patrol. Hop in and I'll lower yep. you down to the beach. She's up there. Okay, here's the here's the scout car. It has an ammo crate on the back, which gives you infinite SMG ammo, meaning you're gonna want to use that gun a lot while you're up here on this segment. Because we got another driving sequence up ahead. Hooray! A much longer one this time. 
Or at least it feels longer. Maybe I just prefer the boat to the car, but... Yeah, as you can see, those right there are antlions. They're these big bug monsters. I think they're meant to be a reference to the bugs from Starship Troopers. They're not challenging to kill at all. Like, you can just run them over. And uh, it'll be no challenge. Like, look at that. Look at that. You can just run them the hell over. Now, this car does have a gun attached to it. And that gun in question is the Tau Cannon from Half-Life 1. Unfortunately, the Tau Cannon in this game has been nerfed severely. It can no longer kill a helicopter with a charged shot. And it just kind of sucks overall. It's really just easier to get out of the car and fight yourself, or just... or just use the car itself as a weapon. The only plus is that it has infinite ammo now, whereas in the last game you couldn't go two minutes without running out of ammo for it. Uh, it's kind of like the Hive Hand from the first Half-Life in that case, in that it looks really cool, but it kind of just sucks. Now, originally it appears you were going to be able to hand-wield this weapon as well, uh, but that ended up not happening, so... So, instead, you just gotta use the gun when it's attached to the car. And it kind of sucks, honestly, and... oh, crap. Oh, crap! Oh, crap! Ow! Yeah, this... One thing you'll learn about driving this car pretty quickly is it doesn't control the best. It's not badly controlled, I guess, but I just suck at driving it. Is my main thing. Ow. Oh, yeah, you can flip the antlions over, which is only there so you can get a better shot at them. Oh yeah, these things. These things, uh, the antlions don't like to come near these. Though, if you're an idiot, you can turn them off. At least not now. Oh, seagull. Got it! <laughs> uh, but yeah, the antlions... This part actually went through quite a bit of development, the coast part. Originally, you're supposed to go through a mine shaft. Presumably, that would just be an extension of the Ravenholm mines, where you had to fight. Uh, you had found antlion grubs, and you found an antlion, a big antlion called the Antlion King. If that sounds familiar to you, that's because they basically reused that idea for episode two with the antlion grubs and the antlion guardian replacing the king. Though the guardian was kind of, in my opinion, kind of a disappointing boss fight because it's, it's just literally an antlion guard, but just bigger. And we haven't met the guards yet, so spoiler for enemy that we won't be meeting for a while, actually. Okay, just die. Uh, I hate those things. There's a couple of things up here you're gonna want, so don't leave this house until you're sure you've gotten everything. And what that is is an ammo crate of grenades, which I don't even need. They give you one of those in a later segment. There's an SMG grenade in that little catch there. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop it down there because I, I feel like I'm gonna need, I'm gonna use an SMG grenade here in a second because of that thing and I fell. God damn it! Ow. Okay, got it, but I missed the first time. God damn it. Uh, and the little the little shit's still alive and it ran into that room uh, We'll give the enemy AI credit for not being completely and utterly stupid um, It may seem like the combine have the worst AI ever if you're playing this just because they But the main that's not really the game's fault It's more of the the designers fault uh, because the Combine actually do have good AI. They have tactics that would work in big outdoor areas, which this game really doesn't have a whole lot of. Basically, there's this, and then there's the water hazard section. Those are basically the two big outdoor areas of this game. Otherwise, you're basically... What are you doing up here? Go away! <laughs> yeah, you can just yeet the antlions. It's, it's kind of funny, to be honest. 
I don't know if they intended for that to be funny, but oh shit. For some reason they got up here. In the car. In the car. Get the hell out of that one. And uh, here we get probably the dumbest death in this entire game. And in fact, the first death in the whole game. So, you can see the car is just rolling along. It rolls into the ocean. And that leads to a game over. Because if you lose the car, if the car falls into the ocean or something like that, you end up getting a game over. Thankfully, it didn't send me back for it. But I'm going to be very cautious over here. I know the, the resistance had very little to work with. These are really shitty fences. Unless this is somehow a combine or something. I really doubt that. Just because this does not look like one. Oh shit, the car's stuck on the cliff. Yeah, the car gets stuck. A lot. Uh, so you're gonna have to get it out. Uh, and that means you're gonna have to go on foot while avoiding these damn ant lions. But here, we actually do manage to get something funny. I actually managed to kill that antlion by throwing the car on it. Maybe see that as a preview to episode one, even though I'm not sure if I'll ever let's play that. I don't know if I'll let's play the episodes, because I'm, I'm not nearly as good at those as I am at this game. Alright, uh, Thumper should keep me safe from the antlions. Get me that armor. Uh, and a, there's a there's a later part in this game, I think, where there's something hidden in the back of one of those. I kept checking every single one of those I find. Just in the hopes that there'll be something in there. Some flammable canisters. Oh, hello. Bam. You're on fire. Oh, crap. Yeah, shotgun guy. These guys are really dangerous. And there's another soldier that's just shooting at me. Get me that med kit. Uh, and some binoculars, which you can use to see where we're going exactly. Uh, oh, hey, you can see the G-Man up there. Okay, apparently trying to zoom in when you're looking through the binoculars, it doesn't work. And I love this NPC here who just kicks the dead ant lion. Uh, okay. But that's done. Grab some more armor. Here. Okay, this is not exactly the area I'm thinking of, but there's a later area in the game where you have to go along like a cliff path. This is not it, though. Which just makes me think of the cliff path from Pokemon Soul Silver. Even though I barely remember playing through that game. Because, uh, as good as it is, I liked Soul Silver a lot. But it's kind of forgettable, all things considered. At least compared to some of the other Pokemon games. Especially compared to the other ones I've played. I've played Diamond, I've played o Omega, I've played Alpha Sapphire, and I've played, uh, Oak Shocker Deck. I have to take this bastard out first, because he's annoying me. And I've played Y version. Grab that. There's nothing up here! There's a bunch of grenades. I don't know why they're being stored in a boat, of all things, but... And I'm not even gonna try... I was gonna try to lob a grenade into that boat. Uh, to... Oh, by the way, with the gravity gun, you can push these. What are these things made of? Oh, if that makes them so light that the gravity gun can push them. If the gravity gun picked them up, I think I would just scream. Because that would just be ridiculous. Um, oh, we're already there? We're already at New Little Odessa? Jesus Christ, that was fast. Way faster than I remember it being. But yeah, just swoop the antlions. the base nearly run this guy over hurry get in the basement we're expecting gunships at any moment colonel coverage will be glad to see you made it get in the basement yeah, we're colonel. making sure everyone has what they need to hold off an attack that's what i'm doing asshat uh, except where the fuck is the basement 
don't remember where the basement is. Which is weird, considering that I technically live in a basement. You know, I don't really think of it as a basement. It's, it's not like the basements you see in this scary stories and shit like that. Is our oh, best God. bet for taking down a gunship. Ah, hello. I'll be right with you. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. Using the laser guide, you can steer your rocket past the gunship's defenses and prevent it from shooting down your rocket. This will only anger it at first, but if you can survive long enough to make several direct hits, you'll be rewarded with a prize worthy of any mantelpiece. Now, the hell would put a gunship on their mantelpiece? It looks ugly as shit. Oh yeah, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, give it to me, give it to me, give me the damn thing, give me the rocket launcher. Okay. Time to fight the gunship. And there it is, new enemy, gunship. Pretty damn smart enemy, actually, because, uh, you can see it shot my rocket down. Now... When they were testing the gunship, originally, uh, it was meant to target the most dangerous thing in the environment, which is normally you. But when they were testing it, the gunship actually realized the AI was smart enough that, uh, to realize that the rocket being shot by you is actually more dangerous than the player themselves. So it would actually shoot the rocket instead of you. Which, uh, that's pretty clever for a video game, uh, for a video game AI. Those extra rockets. I'm trying to get in that shed so there are more rockets in there. You can see, this thing is pretty damn annoying to kill when you shoot your rockets down. But it doesn't take very many hits. It only takes three direct hits of the rocket launcher to kill. And uh, speaking of rocket launcher, I believe this is called the AT-4. This type of rocket launcher. But yeah, uh, boss fight, I guess. Not really that difficult. Uh, it's. I suppose it's more difficult on other difficult, on harder difficulties. Because on, I know that on harder difficulties, the gunship takes more hits. Well deserved. I shall have someone open the gate for you immediately, so that you can drive on. I understand that Doctor Vance is in great need. Yes, Use yes, he is. Caution when approaching the bridge. Radio silence from that outpost leads me to believe it has come under combined control. Still, you're clearly the right man for the job. Well, we're nearing the end of this part, anyone, so I think I'm. Farewell. And please tell Dr. Vance that Colonel Coverage sign off. not having been able to rescue him in person. Uh, see you guys 